All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We have a smaller group. Our numbers have dwindled a little bit compared to the beginning of the semester. Um, not sure exactly why, but that's okay. Uh, the six of you that are joining me now and hopefully a few more will not have to watch a recording. But I wanted to do this meeting early this week uh, because um, this is one of the more important creed document parts. I still rank the values as the most important one. Actually, I would kind of give that, they're all important, but I, I really love the values one. I really love the last one, the mission statement that you're going to be doing in a couple of weeks. But this one is tricky. Uh, I'll just put it that way. Uh, goal setting is tricky. Uh, it's cumbersome. It's it can be annoying. It's very effective if done right. And so I'm actually going to kind of blow inner victory up a little bit uh, today. I love inner victory. I love the book. I love the author. I love the concepts. I love the class. But goal setting, as Brother Christensen teaches, is kind of a separator. Those who set goals are more likely to achieve more than those who don't. But the problem is there's an inherent problem with the way most of us set goals. So I'm going to review two things. I'm going to review inner victory style of goal setting, which has two parts, A goals and Z goals. A goals are tied to your values. Z goals are like your bucket list. And I, I hope to see both from everybody. I'd love to see A goals and Z goals. Now, the little case study um, kind of because of the Z goals, um, they kind of often get left off. So I recommend that we do both, even though the actual study part of this, the case study part, kind of leaves Z goals out. So I'm hoping to see both. So. I'm skipping ahead a little bit. All right, uh, minimize that. Oh, well, it's not gonna minimize. That's okay, I'll move it out of the way. So A goals are tied to your values. And there's two parts to this. A goals is, the goal is what you want to achieve and the objectives are how you're going to achieve something. So A goals and Z goals. Now, if you're going to do the inner victory style, let's say you end up with six values from last week. Then you're going to set six goals. And then you're gonna have your Z goals on top of that. So your goals should pass the SMART test. And this is the SMART test. Your goals should be specific, measurable, require action, should be realistic, and should have a time frame. So I'm gonna give you an example of a goal from my creed document, okay? Now you can see it's a couple of years old. So here's the goal. Attend the temple at least twice monthly in 2018. The objectives are what's below the goal. Set a monthly schedule, first and third Friday, first Saturday, third Friday, and 10 endowment session on business trips to at least 12 family names in the year and participate in ward sealing and initiatory assignments. So here's how this goal stacks up with the SMART test. Specific and requires action. Attend the temple is very specific and it's gonna require that I act, that I do something. Measurable and realistic. Living in Rexburg, attending twice a month is easy, realistic, and I can measure that. I either do or I don't. And time frame, there's actually two time frames in the year and in the month. Okay. And then the objectives are just going along with how you do that. So if you want to follow the inner victory model, let's say you have five to seven values. That seems to be a typical number of values. You would set five to seven goals with an objective list for each one, okay? 
Now your Z goals are kind of like your bucket list. So here's a list of, I need to update these because I've actually done a couple of these. Uh, but the Z goals would be, these are things I'd like to do before I die. I would like to walk where Jesus walked. For me, that's somewhere in this continent. I've actually been down to some sites that people say could be Book of Mormon sites uh, in Mexico and Guatemala and uh, Belize. Um, I'd like to go to Israel and the Holy Land. I'd like to take my wife back to the Philippines where I served. I'd like to visit New Carmath in South Wales where a lot of my ancestors come from. I would like to write a book. That one I could knock off because I've actually written a book. Um, I'd like to win a photography contest. I've actually done that as well. Teach a class in computer graphics, pick my sons and daughters up from their missions. I'm 0 for 3 there. I've had three kids serve. I've done zero of that, failing there. Visit many of the Civil War sites. And I'd like to meet John Stockton. For you younger people, John Stockton used to play for the Utah Jazz. Okay? So, in summary, two kinds of goals. From your values, five to seven, and with objectives for each, and a bucket list. So, before I blow this all up, if I see this on your creed document, awesome. You're following the syllabus. You're following the book. So before I blow that all up, are there any questions about setting goals that way? Any questions? Feel free to type in on chat or unmute your mic. If not, we're going to show you another way to do goals. All right, seeing none. Okay, so Whitney's asking a really good question. You're going to blow it up. Do you want both ways? No, I want one or the other, okay? So you can do it inner victory style, or you can do it the style I'm going to show you right now, okay? Here we go. This is called the four disciplines of execution. This is one of the world's top business books. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I like it because it's, Stephen Covey World, Seven Habits. Um, but Chris McChesney, who's the principal author, went to Rick's College. So he's one of us. <coughs> he's actually spoken on campus a couple times. But this is the four disciplines of execution. Number one, you have to understand, before we get to the first discipline, you have to understand that we live in what we call the whirlwind. The whirlwind is our regular day job. It's our regular life. The problem is, is the whirlwind can suck up everything that we're doing. And it makes it hard to carve out a little time and focus on goals. What Chris McChesney would teach us is that you should focus on a wildly important goal. A wildly super important, Eric's nodding his head, an important singular goal. Here's the problem with typical goal setting. When we set too many goals, we likely will achieve none. And the four disciplines of execution, Machesny World would teach us that five or six or seven goals focused on at one time is too many. So discipline one, you should focus on your wildly important goal. And I'm going to repeat this a couple times. You should work on one goal at a time only. It doesn't mean that the others aren't important. It doesn't mean you ignore the day job. So the day job for me is my job at the college. It's being a dad, it's being a husband, it's taking care of a few things around the house, it's taking care of me. I'm gonna work on all of those, but I'm gonna carve out a little bit of time every day to focus on the one goal I'm working on. Now, the way you write a wig, wildly important goal is like this, from X to Y by when. So it's still a smart goal, it's simpler, and you should only have one, maybe two wigs at a time. And I argue that you should have one. So here's an example of a wig. Let's say that my goal was to weigh 
160 pounds by July 1st. I'm going to say July 1st, 2020. I need to update this. Okay. That's from X to Y. Right now, I weigh 180. I want to get to 160 by July 1st, 2018. Okay. Any questions about discipline one? So on your creed document, if I see one goal only, I'm not going to give you a lower score. I'm going to applaud you and say, thank you for listening. You're going to have better luck focusing on one goal. Okay. It means a little less homework, but it doesn't mean that the other five or six goals aren't important. You're going to just say, I'm going to focus on this one at this time. Okay. Any questions? One goal is better. Now here's why this works. Okay. I'm trying to remember this right. There will always be more good ideas, more things that are important than there is the capacity to execute. Okay. So science says, if you have one to three goals, you might achieve one to three. If you have four to 10, you'll achieve one to two, maybe. And if you have more than 10, you'll achieve zero. Okay. So that's discipline one. Here's discipline two. Okay. Focus on the lead measures. Okay. This is very simple. I'm going to try to make it super simple. Okay. Your wig is a lag measure. So let's say my wig is 160 pounds. Just by having that stated goal doesn't mean I'm going to achieve anything. I could get on the scale every day and say, still at 180, today I'm at 181, tomorrow I'm at 179, ah, 182. That's a lag measure. You have to do things that are going to affect the wig, the lag measure. And that's what the lead measures are. And the lead measures must be two things, predictable and measurable. So here's another example. Your lag measure might be your GPA. Well, just saying I want a 4.0 isn't going to get me a 4.0, okay? The lead measures on getting a higher GPA could be attending class, taking good notes, studying from eight to five every day. That would be a good lead measure. And being ahead on homework, whatever. You can have those things, okay? For my weight goal, I have only two lead measures calories burned and calories consumed. If I exercise more and I eat less or eat smarter, I am confident those two things will affect my wig. Okay? Here is what the science behind lead measures. It has to predict that it will move the lag, the wig, and it has to influence the lag. It's like a lever, okay? And this is the most critical part of 40X. The lag is an important thing, and some of them are a little harder to measure. Weight loss is easy to measure. GPA is easy to measure. Testimony, harder to measure, okay? But you can still judge how you're doing there. Um, so those are some things, okay? Discipline three, you need to create a compelling scoreboard. Okay, so the compelling scoreboard is something that you're going to see all of the time. And it's going to track your lead measures and your wig. Does anybody here use MyFitnessPal? Anybody? I've had good seasons of MyFitnessPal. I've had bad seasons, okay? So MyFitnessPal is a phone app, and you can also have it on your computer, okay? It makes it easy to track my two lead measures. It makes it easy to track calories consumed and calories burned, and it also keeps track of your weight. You have to enter your weight. So what I do today, I can say I rode my bike for an hour. I enter that into MyFitnessPal and says, oh, that's 700 calories. And then I can enter what I ate for breakfast, what I ate for lunch, what I ate for dinner, and what I did for snacks. It says, oh, you've consumed 1,900 calories. And it tells you that the goal is 2,400 a day. So if I consume 1,900 and I burned 800, then I'm, I'm money ahead. I'm ahead of the game. 
And then it allows me to keep track of how I'm doing. And here's another, another page on that, okay? My goal is 2,000 calories today. If I exercise for 1,500 and I ate 1,067, that's not very much, then I'm gonna be losing weight. Now, I did this successfully one time. Uh, I did this a few years ago and I went from 182 to 164, which the doctors say is my ideal weight. I'm five foot seven and I'm built a certain way. Doctors say I should 164. I did it and it worked. Um, so I have faith that this does work. Okay, discipline four. Create a cadence of accountability, okay? A cadence of accountability implies that you're going to be able to make an accounting of how you're doing with your goals. You're going to review the scoreboard and you're gonna have a weekly meeting where you do these things, okay? You're gonna count. This means you need a partner. So you could meet once a week maybe with my spouse and say, here's an accounting of how I did this week. Right now I'm at 176, that means I've lost four pounds. Last week I did my fitness pal every day and I miss Friday, I'm gonna do better next week, I'm gonna plan ahead, okay? So President Monson, I don't think he knew he was doing this, but he outlined this quote, which I shared in my class announcement this week, Four disciplines of execution, exactly. He said, when we deal in generalities, we shall never succeed. When we deal in specifics, we shall rarely have a failure. When performance is measured, performance improves. When performance is measured and reported, the rate of performance accelerates. So for those of you who've served a mission, this is exactly what you did on your mission. You had weekly goals, you had monthly goals, you had weekly meetings, you reported on how many lessons you taught, how many investigators you contacted, how many baptisms you had. That's how missions succeed. <coughs> so, any questions? To sum up, well, let me show you a little more slide, then I'll show you a couple of examples. On the left, I see too much of, okay? I see and that's why I wanted to do this Monday so people can have a chance to maybe think about this a little bit more. I see a lot of wish statements. I will try and lose weight. I'll be a better scholar, gospel scholar. I'll have a more loving relationship with my spouse. Those are all really good things, right? Well, here is a SMART or a WIG goal. I will weigh 160 pounds by July 1st, 2018. I will read, preach my gospel, and mark all relevant scriptures by December 31st, 2018. Again, these are old. I will go on a minimum of 52 dates, one per week with my spouse this year. Okay? Now, all of those, let's say that I was going to focus on the bottom one as my wig. Okay? I'm going to have a scoreboard on my fridge. I'm going to tell my wife, we're going to go on a date every week this year. I'm not going to miss don't let me miss. These are the plan. These are the, the lead measures are, I'm gonna set a time, I'm gonna ask you out, we're going to go, okay? And we're gonna keep track. How am I doing? Every Sunday, I'm gonna meet with my wife and say, how did we do this last week? Well, we went on a date on Friday. We actually had lunch on Thursday. We kind of did too. Thank you, okay? All right, let's forge ahead. Any questions? So to sum up, before I show you a couple of examples, you can do it one of two ways. You can do inner victory style, which is one goal per value, five, six, seven goals, and a list of Z goals. Or you can do it for the X way, which is one goal that you're gonna work on with lead measures. And then I still want you, if you do 40 X, I still want you to do Z goals, okay? Z goals should be no matter what, everybody does, list of Z goals, okay? Now, the examples I'm going to show you are all inner victory goals. And I want you to notice though, that if you want to just say, no, I'm gonna do one only, that's perfectly fine. So here's an example. Goal, complete the P90X program in 2013. Tells you how old the slideshow is. Number two, uh, so that's time frame, P90X, this year. 
specific, measurable, from x to y by z, to, from x to y by when, that works. Okay. S goal: study the scriptures every day. Okay. Again, that has a time frame. Goal: earn the title exceeds expectations. That's an, a work goal this year. Goal: to let every teacher I've had know I appreciate them this year. Okay. And Give my wife her dream marriage this year. That one's a little fluffy in my mind. That's, you could go a bazillion ways there, okay? And then the, the goals, or the objectives are listed below, and they would be like your lead measures, okay? Example two. Again, that person did all of his on one page, which is perfectly fine. Here's an example of uh, spend time reading uh, the Book of Mormon, 15 minutes a day. Study the scriptures at least 15 minutes. Oh, spend time reading. That's learning. Spend 15 minutes a day reading. A call, accomplish all homework before or around 7 p.m. Okay. So just a couple of examples there. Okay. Any questions that any of you have? Again, I muddy the water up by giving you two choices. Um, four disciplines of execution, in my opinion, is a better way to do goals. And so if I see that style, I'm going to cheer you on because I think it's a smarter way to do it. Okay, any questions? Any comments, any thoughts before we wrap up at 23 minutes? That's pretty good. My phone just told me that the stock market dropped 3,000 points today. My 401k is taking a bloodbath but it will rebound. Okay, any questions? All right, I have a question on chat. I don't wanna make sure I miss this one, hang on. From Whitney again. So Whitney's asking, so if you only use the one goal method, how do you update it throughout time? Do you have a page that you pick with goals from? That's a great suggestion, and that's what I would do. So, I have a list of five or six goals, but I'm gonna work on just one this time. And your one wig may be done in the next three months. You can say, yep, done, got it. I'm now going to go to wig number two. And then you're gonna work on that one. So, and I think it's smart that all of us should have a wig we're working on always, okay? Did that answer your question, Whitney? Okay, awesome. Hey, any other questions? Okay, seeing none, I'll stay on if anybody has any. If not, we'll see you next week. Hope everybody stays safe. Follow all the rules of staying healthy, and we'll get through this stuff. Thank you all. Wash your hands. Wash your hands, Eric. Thank you. My daughter said, my hands are all dried out. I said, good. Use lotion. Make sure you wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.